we got big book. Hi, hello. How's everybody doing? Oh, oh my goodness. Ooh, this is exciting. I have not made a bookish video in a while. Uh, quick update. I got really sick in India and I was going to make videos and post it for you guys and I didn't. So I didn't really keep up with the two week thing that I told you I was going to do, but I want to try really hard for starting again for the fifth time. What are we talking about today? We are talking about my 2024 TBR. Um, some of them are like anticipated reads. Some of them are just like what I want to read because I haven't really gone through a lot of kind of upcoming books, which I actually I'm going to do with you guys at the end of this to see if I want to add anything to the TBR that I already have for 2024. If if you saw my January video and you saw, oh, here's what I want to read in January. I didn't really hit all those books. So I'm going to actually tell you what I'm actually going to read instead of saying what I would like to read and then not and then never get to it. That's where we're going with this. I have the entire book stack here. Um, it's just off cam a little bit. Let me see if I can put it on cam just so you guys know that I'm serious about this. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, this is awkward. My mouse pad's... Oh, there we go. And I, now I can see the bottom of the book stack. Perfect. Okay. So, one of the first... Okay. Let's just start this off. Let's get started. Okay. One of the first things... Let me adjust this mic real quick. One of the first things it's happening in January is this bad boy. The Atlas Paradox, which is book three of the Atlas Six series. Sorry, the Atlas series. This was the Atlas trilogy, or what I call it. The Atlas Thruple. Actually, we're not using trilogy. We're using Thruple now. You're going to spit on people if you say Thruple, but it is what it is. Um, book three, Atlas Paradox comes out. I loved book one. I didn't mind book two. Uh, I thought book two was just a good bridge book, but nothing really like crazy crazy happens so i'm hoping like we get a really good book three like ending um if it's one of those things where like everybody dies we'll see what happens i don't really know um but it's coming out in january and i'm considering the same way i did atlas paradox is to do a full day read of it and share my thoughts periodically on my socials um and in short form on instagram youtube and tiktok um i don't think i'll be streaming me reading it because i just like move around a lot and read but I'm considering doing an all day read of that novel. Um, if it does not get to me early enough in the morning, I will do what I do with most novels that I want to read on release day is buy the physical copy and buy the ebook and then buy and then read the ebook immediately when I wake up and then just go from there. Um, so I probably will do an all the full day read for it. Um, let me just confirm. Eh, it's coming out in January. I know that um, I'll probably be taking off of work if I can. If I can't, then I'll just use, save the full day read for the weekend. And then I'll read it then. Uh, but that's one of the big ones is the Atlas Paradox. The next one actually also coming out in January. I think it's January 4th is book two of the Scales of Balance trilogy, duology, sci-fi fantasy series is uh, The Breaker of Change. Sorry, I paused because I had to remember what the name was real quick. Okay, so let me tell you, I, got, I need to tell you guys about this book because I haven't really talked to you guys about this book in a long form video. I've only talked about it. I um, mean, like a short form uh, fashion. So Tim Facciola is an author. He's an epic fantasy author that I ran into on TikTok and I've been following for a while. So he debuted his first novel, The Scales of Balance, book one, or sorry, the of the a Vengeful Realm series. Book one is called this the, um, the Scales of Balance, and it was so good so he released it for free on ebook for the first week so i got it like the day after the day i got that email saying it was free on ebook i paused whatever i was reading then and then i started reading that book this book was so polished i guys you don't even oh my goodness so the premise is about a gladiator who is who like gets conscious in a kind of temple and he's about to be told like they're doing like a temple reading and he's about to be told what his like future holds and things like that um so he's lost his memory basically and it's 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 so so good it was such a polished clean clean novel i could not put it down i think i finished it in maybe three days three or four days because i did i didn't like i didn't like 
stop work to read it like I would other series, but I I read it like every single evening up until I finished it. And it was a, it was one of the most polished debut novels I've read thus far in my life. And it was great. So I'm really, really looking forward to book two, um, Breaker of Change when it comes out. And the book cover for that one is so clean. I might actually get these in physical copy if I end up enjoying the rest of the series. Right now, I just have it in ebook and I'll probably buy book two also in ebook. I probably won't get the physical copy right now. But that's the other one coming out in January. So in January, I'll probably start reading. I probably will 100% read Atlas Paradox and finish it. And then I'll probably start Breaker of Chains at the end of January and at least try and get through a good chunk of that going into Feb. Um, but then other books that I want to start reading. So I also I also did buy The Adventures of Amina al um a couple of months ago in Barnes and Nobles just because I wanted to have the book. I know it's a really good standalone pirate pirate novel. Everybody loved it when it came out. Um, I got I actually bought this because um, I saw a book talker talk about it a lot. I think it might have been Emma. I think it might have been Emma. Let me check real quick because I do want to give credit where credit is due. It is Emma. Her name is Emma Skies on TikTok. I actually have one of her other recommendations on this list. But I I'm, I have Amina, Adventures of Amina also Rafi that I want to read. And that I'll hopefully I'll get to um, if my camera zooms in. Hopefully that I'll get to during the year. This is not like a specific I'm going to read this this month. It is just on my list to read during the year. Um... Ooh, next summer, next summer, we have a big, big book coming out. It is apparently a sequel slash a continuation of the House of the Cerulean Sea world slash story called Somewhere Beyond the Sea by TJ Klune. And last year I read this book. It was one of my five star reads of the year. Absolutely heartwarming novel. Absolutely heartwarming novel. Um, I loved every every minute of it, and I thought it was so cute. One of my one of my colleagues at work, also a good a good friend outside of work, start, uh, started reading House of the Cerulean Sea, and then she was just like messaging me about it all the time, and it was so funny about the lot of like when T, uh, Tor or TJ books uh, or TJ Kloon tweeted it out because it was the same week that she started reading the book. That I saw that the tweet came out saying he's working on a sequel called Beyond the Somewhere Beyond the Sea. And so super excited to read this novel. Um if it's in the summer, <laughs> probably a full day read when I skip work. So hmm. you know how it goes here, okay? I have no problem working my tail off and then taking off on debut days and reading a full book okay that's just what we do here that's what i did for iron flame actually i read iron flame in 24 hours but i was already on vacation in india i haven't talked to you guys about iron flame enough okay i was supposed to be insufferable online about this series and i was just just barely um annoying about it i wasn't even insufferable about it okay i know some people think it was the worst read of their year was fourth wing some people it was the best read of their year some people just thought it was okay i get it everybody's entitled to their opinion for me Shit was peak, okay? It, it just had everything I liked, it, everything I wanted in a fun read. You know what I mean? But I do want to say, now that we're on that topic, listen to me, okay? If Rebecca Yaros comes out and says, book three is launching in 2024, I might go crazy online, okay? I'm just letting you guys know that, okay? If she says it's launching in 2024, because she hasn't announced it. Like, it's supposed to be like a, like a five or six book series. But if book... Also, no. Continue. Con con continue your thought, Ari. Stop going on tangents. If book three comes out next year, you can believe we are skipping work. We are reading that novel. That day, I'm taking all the notes. I am going to be insufferable online. And that is just how it's going to be. Okay? This series has become my top series of all time for me personally okay because of how it makes me feel when i read it which is i just like i just start laughing and have and i'm having a good time okay that's just some conjecture i don't know what's happening i don't have insider knowledge i'm not even part of the bookish community half the time because i'm not that deep all right so moving on the shadow of gods by john gwynn Okay, 
I heard I heard of this book last year when I was doing my whole authors of October series and I was going through an, Oct an author a day and I was doing a John Gwynn video and I looked at and I read and I found his book like Malice, the Malice series and the Shadow of God series. And I want to touch Malice as well at some point. Um, and by touch, I mean read, not just like touch the book. So I bought the Shadow of Gods and I have the Hunger of Gods back there as well because I do want to get into brutal brutal aggressive fantasy i just want to see how that makes me feel reading it you know like it will it in cap like would it will it captivate me will it uh encompass all my, my thoughts all the time kind of thing or will i just read it as an average read you know i don't expect going into this kind of book to be to there be like a lot of fun banter and things like that like a fourth wing right like i'm not comparing shadow of gods to fourth wing I'm just going to, I'm reading it to see if I like this style of fantasy. And I think that's one of the most important things is trying out new styles of genres. Because this is its own, it's, this is epic fantasy. This is just fantasy, right? But the style of the novel, not the genre, but the style of the novel, I think is really, is a really important thing to think about. And this is brutal warlike fantasy. And so I just want to try and read it out and see how it goes. The next one that I'm going to definitely read is I'm going to go back to the anime. Okay. If you've been here on the channel and if you've not, welcome to the channel. So I've been reading the Course of Gods epic fantasy series by Jen Lyons for two years now. In 2021, no, sorry, for, for a year and a half now, almost two years. Last year, I read book one, which was... Um, the Ruin of Kings. And then this year, I, and, I, and I enjoyed it. I shared my thoughts on it. I made a whole video about just Ruin of Kings when I was doing my archive reviews. And then I also read book two this May, or the name of all things. And then I read book three, I believe this summer called The Memory of Souls. And I, and so far out of the three, book three is my favorite. Um, Cause it, it just, it was the perfect blend of your RPG cast mixed with good, good story and fantastic banter and by book three you really have a grasp of the magic system the lore the characters the history and things like that to where when new information is, is is put is put towards you you could actually understand comprehend process and um enjoy what's going on so but this novel every time i read i read one of the books i just have to put it down for a little bit like in like a season of anime like i can't i couldn't i can't binge this series like i have to sit down like as you really think about what just happened but also i got i think i got i thought i think i got this entire series when i was in cleveland earlier this year's no probably last year um i went to the book loft in columbus ohio and i got this entire series because some some of it was discounted but i just wanted the entire series because i knew i was going to read the entire series i just, I just thought I, I might as well want it and i love I love the book covers for them, guys. Like, I love the way these are done. Like, these are amazing to me. So I have them. Also, I'm peeling off this 5% sticker. Let me turn my gain up and you guys can hear how this sounds. Okay, maybe you didn't... Okay, maybe you didn't get all of that, but I it sounded good to me. <laughs> okay, so House of Always is on the list. I don't know if I'll get to the last book, The Discord of Gods, but um, House of Always is on the list. It'll probably be a summer read when I'm slower at work and I can spend more time reading books. Um, some of these other ones might be more like during busy season and things like that. A lot of stuff is happening, guys, next year. Next year, a lot of stuff is happening. So I don't know when I'm going to get to certain things, to be honest. Um, if you want a life update, I'm getting married next year. So I'm going to have a lot of that stuff going on earlier in the spring. And then I'll be moving. So that should be a fun time. And other things. But that's the main thing is me moving and getting married. So I have to move these books again. Oh, maybe I can get a better bookshelf. Maybe I can get a better bookshelf that houses all of my Chima novels. And then I can house all of my manga and stuff like that. And my other books. Maybe we think about that. 
we'll talk. We'll powwow on that during the year, and we'll and then we'll come back to this. So, one of the other books that I'm gonna start reading is actually this one. Okay, the Shades of Magic trilogy, Thruple. Sorry, Shades of Magic Thruple, starting with Brother, please. Um, oh. The Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I read my first V.E. Schwab novel back in September or October. It was called Gallant. And I liked it. It's the standalone novel. It was pretty good. It wasn't bad. Um, I, I did enjoy V.E. Schwab's language and storytelling and verbiage and use of imagery and everything like that. Um, this is another series recommendation that I got from Emma Skies because I know that she loves this series and I was very intrigued by it because pe a lot of people talk about the shades of magic when it comes to an actually good magic system in a story, which is one of my main things is if you have a fantasy system with a magic system, it's just gotta be good. Like, there, there's a lot that goes into a good magic system. So I'm really hoping that I do enjoy what's going on in this series. Um, shades of magic. I also have on my list two other novels, to, two other things to start reading next year, right? And one of them is called the Temeraire series. Um, this was recommend to, recommended to me by my uncle. He said he, he loves this series. And so I went ahead and got book one called His Majesty's Dragon um, by Naomi Novak. I'll put the book cover up here. I'll also be putting all the book covers up here for you guys to look at if I'm not actually showing it to you. Um, and it's a it's a long like I think six to eight book series, um, so I will be starting that either at the end of December or early Jan is when I'll probably start it. Um, I'm getting through a couple of books right now. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to add one thing to this list. Oh my gosh, um, the Inheritance Games. Oh my goodness. So I was supposed to read the Inheritance Games earlier this year, and I read the sample back in the summer, and I wanted to read it. I just couldn't get it on ebook because it's so back ordered. But my one of my friends, shout out you, has the series and said I can borrow it from her. So that's my goal is to read the inherited series. At least book one and see how I like it and then move on to the rest of it. The inheritance series is one of those series where I've heard kind of mixed reviews on it. Obviously, some people like it, some people don't. So I'm just interested in seeing what goes on in it. Um, I already kind of know what goes on in it because I read the sample. It's like a whole like random girl gets put into the inheritance of a, a, a rich dude who just died. And then there's four men. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's basically what I gathered from the sample. So uh, I'll be jumping into that and seeing what happens. Uh, it's, by, it's also by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I'm just adding that to my notes. Now, moving on from fantasy books, I do also have a couple of other genres of things that I'll be reading. Um, first off, the medium of manga. We do talk about manga on this channel as well. We talk about manga, webtoons, and books. And I kind of want to start adding podcasts into it when I recommend you guys things and talk to you guys things that I've been absorbing. I want to start talking about podcasts in terms of another medium of media. Um, but there are three manga slash webtoons that I want to get back into or get into in addition to all the ones that I'm already reading right now that are continually ongoing. Um, because a lot of the, a lot of the times with both manga and webtoons, they're either seasonal or they go on a break. Um, so the ones that I'm reading, and I'll make a video on what I'm reading right now, um, probably at the beginning of January in terms of that. But there are a couple that I want to get back into slash start. So the first one is power of god which is my favorite webtoon of all time one of my favorite fantasy stories of all time simply on the breadth and the scale of just the entire world story building world building the characters the magic system the power system the different powers the different characters like all the character designs everything i personally love about this series okay but i know that a lot of people's gripe about this series is it's also long it's like a one piece where it's very long and, and hard to get into. And if you don't like the art style or something like that, it's just hard to get into it. Um, personally, me, I just kept going. Like, I didn't even understand the magic system when I first started reading it. I just kept going because that's just how I am when I binge things. I just keep going. And I love the art style and everything about it. So I want to get back into it because with this author, SIU, 
um, great, great brain to bring this to life. But with a lot of mangaka and webtoon authors and a lot of like um, authors in general who release weekly uh, chapters like this, they have health issues. And so with like just, you know, being on the clock, around the clock working and stuff. So SIU goes on breaks quite often. So whenever I, um, whenever he goes on a break, I just end up like stopping reading Tower of God just to like the chapters build up and the, let the story build up, like maybe let the arc build up and finish. And then I don't like to just like start back up where I left off. I start from the beginning. Like that's how I am. I start from the beginning. So that's what I'm doing is I'm going to have to find time to start and just start from the beginning of Tower of God and go all the way up and catch up. I. Listen to me. I kind of want to do like a Tower of God. Like I kind of want to do Tower of God content. But let me know if you'd like that. Um, I love Tower of God. I can talk about it. I'm not the most analytical person. But we can, if you, if you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. Okay? Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back into Tower of God. Hopefully at some point next year. I don't know when. I just really want to get back into it. The next thing I want to get back into or get into is actually the Hunter Hunter manga. I've watched the anime a few times, but I've never read the manga. So I want to start the manga from the beginning and then get into it and then continue on the manga past where the anime stops because I know it's peak, right? I follow Matt Houston. I've been influenced by Matt Houston. I know Hunter Hunter is peak, okay? I get it. So, and peak for some people, average for others. And it just, it just depends on what type of storytelling, analytical type of um, whatever it is that you like whatever storytelling type that you like, okay? Some people like Hunter x Hunter storytelling where it's so much foreshadowing and intricacies and backpedaling and a lot of like the power system scaling and the 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 breadth of what you can do with the power system and, 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 that, and that story. People love it and some people don't. Me personally, I think it's nice. I think it's cool, but I want to read the manga to really see what I, how I feel about the story because the anime, um, I couldn't get everything from it. I want to have the, I want to start the Hunter Hunter manga and then I want to start the Black Clover manga mainly because I really enjoyed the Black Clover anime when it was airing um after they fixed the main character yelling all the time I really did enjoy it I enjoyed the story I enjoyed kind of the fight scenes I enjoyed the characters the magic system like the powers and all, and the, all that kind of stuff so I just want to get back into it and just kind of see where where the story goes through the manga. Like I, I enjoy reading manga and I enjoy reading webtoons. And so I just want, kind of want to get back to it and see and see where it goes because the anime isn't back yet, um, which I'm kind of sad about. I miss it. I kind of stop at a really weird point. So I want to I want to read and see what happens. That's kind of it. Now, we've gone through fantasy novels, we've gone through webtoons and manga. This is the last last. Um, genre medium of books that I read and that is obviously lifestyle productivity self-help business right um, so there are not a lot of books in this unlike January when I said I was gonna read a lot of these and I didn't I'm gonna be like completely honest there's not a lot of books in this uh, genre that I actually like to read I like to, I'd rather just listen to people's podcasts and absorb uh, content and lessons and education through podcasts than I would books um, so there's not a lot of ones that I'm actually looking forward to reading. Now, this year, if you don't already know, you know, I did pick up and read Hidden Genius by Plina Marinova Pompliano, tabbed, highlighted, and annotated the shit out of this book. And then I went over it weekly on my summer po on my podcast in season one in the summer. So following that same um, practice, um, I'm going to be starting reading the Feel, uh, Feel Good Productivity by Ali Abdal, which launches December 24th, I believe 24th or 27th. Um, and it'll be a podcast read for us, right? I'll go through the book, I'll read it, I'll annotate it, I'll t and then I'll talk about the kernels that I want to talk about on the, on the podcast. Um, just because I enjoy those novels, 
but I my focus here is fantasy novels here. It's not um, it's not the uh, it's not nonfiction. So those kind of books are over on the podcast. The other one that I want to read was the one that I was showing is $100 million offers. And then I have it back there, $100 million leads by Alex Hormozy, which is just a massive book on marketing um, because I do want to learn. I'm really bad at it. I'm just, I'm, I'm so bad at business things, guys, but I really want to learn. So I'm thinking maybe in the summer, because <clears throat> my podcast is seasonal, if you didn't already know, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, maybe it'll be a summer read. I'll, I'll read Feel Good, product, feel good product, Productivity through the spring or through this winter season, and then I'll read $100 million offers, hopefully through the summer season. Um, and those And those are all the books that I'm currently looking forward to in terms of what I have on my TBR. Um, I can stop the video here, but it's only 26 minutes. And we don't stop at 26 minutes here. Like we keep going. So uh, really quickly, I want to tell you guys about my podcast. I have a podcast called The End Goal Podcast. It's a separate YouTube channel. Um, and on there, I talk about things I don't talk about here, which is mainly lifestyle. Because I, love to, I love to talk about lifestyle. I love to talk about goals. I love to talk about productivity, um, you know, different methods of setting goals, uh, planning, things like that. Talking about mental health, talking about any topic that we can that apply to our lives and self-growth really is what it is. Um, my goal is to share as many many of my experiences as I can and then the experiences of those of my peers that I bring on to the podcast and hopefully people who are listening can get any sort of kernels of advice, wisdom, whatever it is to apply to their own lives and find their end goal in life. That is the goal of the podcast to help to help other people find their end goal in life. Um, I haven't even found mine yet. So like this is just a chronicling of my journey on the way to finding my end goal. If I find my end goal, you'll see you'll see what I did to get there. If you find your end goal, tell me how you did it so I can find mine. Uh, that's kind of everything that the podcast is about. And then I talk about these books and all this stuff. It's just more my it's just more like the rest of my life outside of um, science fiction, fantasy novels. So if you're interested in it, I would recommend you go check out the end goal podcast on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, and then the, and then it's also on Spotify. If you like, it's in the podcast there. That's about it. That's my spiel. Um, you know, I still have Fableware. I rock Fableware all the time. Fableware is still going. The Etsy shop is still up. Go get yourself a Fableware shirt, guys. What are you doing? You know, it's still there. It's still rocking. You know how it goes. And every, like I said, everybody I know who's bought it has loved it. And I just had another sale yesterday. So... Go look at the designs. Go look at the shop. It's always linked to the description. If you don't like it, but you know somebody who would, I would ask you to send it to them. Maybe they'll like it and they can let you know how it is. You know, if you don't want to spend money on it. I get it. Now, for the uh, interactive portion of it, I'll be right back. Okay, so well, if we did this last year. We're doing it again this year. We're going through the Goodreads Choice Awards. And seeing what won this year and seeing if there's anything that we want to add to my, if we want to add anything to my TBR, but if you want to add anything to your TBR, you can do that too. We're just going to go through this and see if we can find any books that we like. I found a couple last year. Um, did I actually read them? Probably not, but we're going to try again this year and see how it goes. So now see a guy like me who loves banter, I would love to clown a lot of these books, but I haven't read them. And I would not want to disrespect anybody's favorites. So I'm not going to clown anything. But I saw this best of lists over here. And I really, really, really want to clown Times Best Must Reads of 2023. So we're going we're gonna to check that out real quickly after this. Um, but anyways, let's just go to the categories, right? Fiction, Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang Wan. Yellow Face is actually, I believe, a satirical novel about the publishing industry, which, is, which I heard is really good. Um, historical fiction, Amelia Hart by Wayward, or Wayward by Amelia Hart, one, Mystery and Thriller, The Housemaid's Secret by Freda McFadden, Romance, Happy Plays by Emily Henry, Romanticy, Fourth Wing, yes sir, um, because it wasn't going to win in, it wasn't going to win in this category, or this category, or this category, so it has to win in this category, you know? <laughs> uh, Fantasy, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, oh my god, 
Y'all don't even know. I wanted to read Hellbent so bad, but apparently Ninth House is a book that comes before it. I did not like Ninth House, guys. I tried. I went through like three or four chapters of it. It was so bad. I had to put it down. I DNF that book ASAP. So maybe I'll pick it up at some point in my life and then be able to actually read Hellbent. Or maybe I'll skip it and then read Hellbent. <laughs> and just see how that goes. Um, science fiction. In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Clune, Horror, Stephen King, Holly. I've never read a Stephen King book. And I think, I don't think I ever will because it's always like a horror or mystery th thriller and I don't really enjoy those kind of novels. Like they don't do anything for me in terms of emotions, dopamine, anything. Like if anything, it's probably an adenosine influ influence that's going to put me to sleep. So I don't, I've never read a Stephen King novel and I don't know if I ever will. A young Adult Fantasy, Divine Rivals. I heard this was an amazing, amazing novel. Um, it is on my list. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, this will be on my... Let me just... Uh, let me pull this over here. And I'm going to put it on my reading list. This is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. As you can see, I don't read a lot of books that immediately come out that are popular with, that are like everybody else because I don't care about that. I read what I want to. Um, young Adult Fiction is Checkmate by Ali Hazelwood. It's really interesting. Debut novel, all, Wayward also won. I thought there were a lot of good debut novels that happened in 2023. So, I mean, the fact that Wayward won, that's amazing. Um, Nonfiction, Poverty by America by Matthew Desmond. Sorry. It, 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 it took me a second for my brain to click. I was like, wait, who is it by? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'll never read this in my life. Memoirs and autobiographies. Britney Spears, the one of me, will never read this in my life. History and biography. The Wager, a tale of shipwreck, mutiny, and murder by David Grant, will never read this in my life. Humor, Being Henry by Henry Winkler, will never read this in my life. So we stick to this section, right? We, we stick to here. And I kind of want to see what some of the other um, kind of, what's it called? nominees were in these because just because something didn't win doesn't mean something's not good let's just check out the other nominees right for the romanticy as you can see it is the clap Ooh, i have another thing to tell you guys i hate everything about these these book titles the something the something and something a something of something and something something of the something a something in the something. A something of something. Something of something and something. Something of the something. Here. A something of something and something. A something of this. A something this something. I don't even know what that is. A something of something. As you can see, there is a very new trend of book titles. I hate them. Absolutely hate them. I hate everything about it. I don't know why. It just rubs me the wrong way. Um, but interesting that a lot of these books are on there. I expected a lot of these books to be on this nominees list, actually, for Romanticy. Um, I, ju I just found this out yesterday. I absolutely love this. So Carissa Broadbent actually names her books. Um, like This is part of a not a duology, but a duet. And I love that. Um, I think we should change our ologies into um, other uh, other names, right? A single book, we all know it's standalone. It can be a one. It can be a one G if you want. That sounds gross. Um, duologies, I love the name duet. Okay, trilogy. Thanks to TikTok, I don't mind thruple. Okay, we're not calling it a threesome, so I don't mind thruple. Um, a quadrology, a quartet of novels, even a quarter of novels, even a quart, not a quart. I don't like quart. Hey, did you read that new quart? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, maybe we should do quarts. Should we do quarts for four? Oh, that'd be so funny. A quintuplet of, no of novels, right? A quintal? A quintal of novels, maybe? Do we like, do we like quintal? <laughs> A sextuplet, right? A sexology. Um, 
Sexology doesn't no. Sex no. No, 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 no. What 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 do you what do you call six of some? What do you call six of something? Uh what is after a quintology? Oh, pentology. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I forgot that pent that pent was a thing for five. Can we call it a pentel? <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Oh, I love this so much. Oh, this is so funny. Uh, a pentology is correct. Blah. A quintology is a mixture of Latin and Greek roots, which I'm a master of mixing roots, mixing Gujarati and Hindi my entire life. Um, what comes after it, though? I need to know what comes after a pentology. What is it? 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 Trilogy. So is it a sext? Because I know sextuplets and other things like that, they use that for six. Was it a sextology? Um, that would make sense. Um, I don't like it, but that would make sense. Um, we're not going to call it a sextol. Uh, we need we need something for six. Okay, we need something for six. I might have to consult TikTok for that. We need something for six. Um, and then for seven, eight, and nine, I think, and I love this on TikTok, I think we call it a orchestra of books. The Wheel of Time is an orchestra, right? Maybe for five and six, we call them choirs. I like Pentel more. Maybe for six, we call it a choir. Okay. Let me know what you think about that. Okay. I want to know your thoughts for the five people who are going to watch this. Okay. We're continuing on. Okay. We already went through Romanticy, Best Fantasy. I'm telling you. Brandon Sanderson is also one of those authors I've never read before. And I don't know if I ever will. Samantha Shannon. I don't want to read a, a Priority of the Orange Tree or Day of Fall Night. They're just large books and people have cried reading them. And I don't know. I don't know if I want to get into that, to be completely honest. Adventures of Mina al Sarafi is right here. I'm telling you guys. Bro. I would. For how long have I been fucking muted? Oh no. Oh no. I don't even know what you all missed. Okay, I'll go back and post and tell you guys what you missed of me talking. Apparently, so on this mic, the mute button is at the bottom. So if I grab it like this and then I touch that because it's like touch sensitive, it just mutes it. God damn it. Okay, well, this is why we have OBS stuff so I can see that instead of having something else on my mother monitor. Young Adult Fantasy! Divine Rivals makes sense. I actually do want to read a uh, Missing Prince series um, or the Stolen Air series. You want the, so, the Stolen Air duet. I think, I think book two is the Missing Prince. I do want to read that by Holly Black. It's kind of on my list. Is it on my list? Um, it, is, it is now on my list. I have a whole uh, notion list of like my reading list and stuff like that. So you know how it goes. Sometimes you just have to make lists. Um, none of these books look interesting in the slide it. None of these books look something of something and something. I hate it. Oh my goodness. This book, bro. I don't know. Okay. I don't know what happened in between me reading the arc of house of Marion and then actually coming out because I read the arc of house of Marion this summer. I put it down. I couldn't finish it. Like I don't, it just wasn't good. I went like almost halfway through the book and I just didn't like it. I don't know what it was about that book. I just felt like it was not going anywhere. And I was like, what are you like? What's the point of this? Like, what is happening here? Just didn't like it. All right. Adult fiction right here. I'm telling you it's on the list, guys. I'm telling you it's on the list. You get it. This looks really funny. I really enjoy rom comedies. Rom coms. That's the that's the word. That's the phrase I was looking for. I really enjoy rom coms, and so I read Dating Dr. Dill last year, like I said. Um, so I really enjoy rom com romance novels. I don't really like like the whole like romance for romance sake, but like there's not a lot of like I don't know like ban like banter back and forth, and like like the the situations just seem like always intense or always steamy or whatever it is. I don't care about that. The rom-coms, sign me up. 
best debut novels. Nothing here stood out to me at all. Anything here stood out to you guys? Nothing here stood out to me. Okay, great. We are done with the Goodreads portion of this as well. And in three, two, one ish, kind of, sort of, one ish. We're back. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed that entire video. I know this is a long one, right? Okay, we do long videos here, guys. Like we don't talk short, okay? The short ones can be for the archive reviews and the book hauls, maybe the recommendation videos. But videos like this, they're just not, they're just long, okay? You just have to listen to me. You just have to listen to me talk. And that's just how it goes, okay? Cool. Um, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys for listening so far. Um, uh, I loved everything about this video. I don't know why I had a great time just talking to you guys. I think it's my new setup, the way I'm sitting, having the book, the book, bookshelf in the back. Everything about this video just felt like one of the best videos that I can make this year. And it's just me talking to you guys. So I enjoy it. Um, look out for other videos on the horizon. I'll be I have like six videos in the bank that I have to make. So I will be working on them and getting videos to you guys as much as possible. I don't want to kind of just package all the books into end of December, January, then you guys have nothing for Feb, March, all that stuff. So there are certain things I'll be saving for later on in the year, but I'll try and make, I'll try and make some good like videos for you guys here. Um, and I'll try, I'm trying really hard to make these videos kind of appealing to new people. I don't know how to do that. And I don't know how to get uh, YouTube to like push my videos. Um, both with a thumbnail and all that stuff, but I'm just going to try and make these videos like I want them, make them good. And hopefully more people are here. So then we have more people in the community to chat with, banter with, talk about books with. That's really what we want. That's really what we want. So that being said, I really appreciate you watching this video to the end. If you did, um, if you watch this on two times speed, bro, do what you want. You know, I watch videos on two times speed as well. And, and, and I get, I'm not, I don't always talk the fastest. I actually talk pretty fast most of the time. But when I'm on videos, I have like the random pauses in between what I say in my, my diction and my language. You know how it goes. You know how it goes. Anyways, I, sorry, I'm tangenting. I'm tangenting again. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you. If you're new here, consider joining the, joining the squad. Consider joining the archives. Subscribe. Um, like the video. Comment on what you've read this year, what you liked, what you're looking forward to reading next year. I would really like to, th really like to like uh, know about it because I look up any video that any book that anybody recommends to me, I look it up and then add it to my list if I, if I'm interested in it. So anything that you have that I'm interested in, I would love to, um, what's it called? I would just love to, I would just love to know. So, um, take care guys. I will see you guys in the next video, which is launching God knows when and whenever, but take care and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.